I'm Roisin and I am passionate about theology, about the law of attraction, about metaphysics and about how trippy this world actually is. I really really have found a lot of solace through diving deep into the structure and the fibres of our world and our universe and the basis of which it all stands and the basis of which it's all created. I found great solace knowing this and understanding where our lives come from, the power of our thoughts, the power of us in creating this life that we have around us, the impact that I have, the control that I have. This has brought me so much peace and it has brought me up and down and I've been to the depth of depression. I've been such an anxious person since I was a child. But understanding the rules and the <laughs> the force of our vibration, i.e. our emotion, it's just it's just magic. It's just magic in in our lives. And you could say that you don't believe in magic, maybe you don't. But I'm telling you that the life all around you is pure creation and it's happening right now every single moment that we are alive, breathing, feeling, being aware, being conscious, expanding our consciousness, thinking, perceiving, developing opinions, developing a reaction. It's, it's amazing. And I think that through this information, through this education, through this understanding, we can have a lot more power and a lot more fun on our little time here on Earth and we can feel a lot more peace with ourselves. We can feel a lot more love. We can feel less jealousy, less uh, comparing ourselves to other people, comparing ourselves to each other, less suffering, less depression less anxiety, less, oh, we're not doing enough, or less victim mode, like, oh, the world is happening all around us, woe is me, I just lost my job, and I've got all these bills. When we actually take a step back and study ancient scriptures from all around the world, from all the different traditions about how the world works, when we look into modern science, when we look into modern quantum physics, metaphysics, epidemiology, all of these wonderful technologies that we now know exist, and our solar system and the galaxies and the push and pull, and the whole world of self-help and self-love and the power of healing ourselves. I found that it's all one, it's all one message. It's all one knowledge, it's one wisdom described in different ways, examined with different tools and different ways and different traditions, different modalities, different people, different folklore different science but the same outcome and it's the same message it's so 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 powerful and i am really really dedicating my life to spreading this news and this message that you are the creator of your life that you are the script writer of every single experience that you have and you can create what you want you can choose something in your mind and make it happen. That's right, you can have whatever you want today, tomorrow, next week. It takes some work, it takes some understanding because we're so complex. We go so deep and our thoughts and our beliefs about ourselves and our lives really impact how this works, right? So we need to have a clean, certain mindset. But it's so possible because we're malleable. We are malleable. Our minds are like soft Play-Doh and we can pull them this way and that way. 
Why do you think kids in Africa are able to have like Kalashnikovs and they're able to just shoot people without feeling a thing? I don't know if they're able to shoot people without feeling a thing, a thing but I've seen a film where they're, maybe it's Blood Diamond, where they're just being shouted at by all of these leaders, these chiefs and these groups and um, they're being brainwashed uh, into why it's right to kill, why it's right to kill, why it's right to kill these people, etc, etc. And they're freaking kids. Like, kids are the most compassionate creatures that we have on this planet. But their minds are malleable. If we tell a kid that they're not good at sums, if they're not good at spelling, if they're not good at drawing, if they're not good at colouring, if they're not good at dancing, if they're too fat to fit into a dress, if they're too fat to run, if they're too stupid to pass a test, if they're too stupid not to do a higher level subject, if they are constantly being corrected, constantly being thrown out of their classroom, um, being told that they are a distraction and not right for class, not right for school, um, not well behaved, not good enough to make a team. Ring any bells? <laughs> These are the ideas that we let in as children. So we let them in and they become part of our identity and we keep them shut in back there in a cupboard covering <laughs> getting covered with dust and no wonder we have trouble seeing ourselves as something that we can love if we're such fuck ups and if we have let ourselves down in the past our parents are only people that are going to love us unconditionally and if we're got not good enough for them then it's going to be pretty hard to <clears throat> accept that as a child because there's something wrong with us if we don't make our parents 100 percent happy so we begin to go out into this world with this flawed identity i'm not good at that i'm not fucking good at that i'm not fucking good at this or that we don't go for things we start seeing small and this is the root of 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 depression it's harsh hurtful critical words that we say to ourselves so all healing begins within it begins with our relationship with ourselves it begins with our relationship our thoughts our words our actions and our beliefs and our ideas about ourselves the first begins with the awareness of the thoughts that are going on with ourselves about 